Simple Solutions for Complex Problems. This video will examine the role of ultrasound guided dilation and curettage in gynecologic surgery. These are the learning objectives of the surgical video. Dilation and curettage, also termed DNC, is generally considered to be the simplest and most basic gynecological procedure. While DNC is a very safe procedure, with complications being rare, complications include uterine perforation with subsequent hemorrhage or injury to surrounding viscera, cervical injury, infection, and the formation of intrauterine adhesions. Transabdominal ultrasound guidance is a useful tool when performing DNC for unusual pathology. Although performance of DNC without ultrasound is acceptable for uncomplicated procedures for pregnancy termination or losses, evidence generally shows that ultrasound guidance increases the safety of DNC procedures performed in more complex cases. The first case is a 40-year-old G4A2P1 who presented with a live cervical ectopic pregnancy measuring 6 weeks and 5 days on ultrasound, who required surgical management after failing inpatient medical management with multi multi-dose methotrexate. In her ultrasound images, the gestational sac with a live fetal heart rate was seen at the proximal portion of the cervical canal, just below the level of the internal os. When using transvaginal ultrasound to evaluate for cervical ectopic pregnancy, the presence of a fetal heart rate and negative sliding sign between the gestational sac and the cervical canal is strongly suggestive of this diagnosis. In the operating room, concurrent real-time transabdominal ultrasound was performed. The first step was to retrofill the bladder with sterile water. Retrofilling of the bladder allows for the creation of an acoustic window to better visualize uterine pathology. Here we can visualize a cervical ectopic pregnancy in relation to the antiverted uterus. The next step was then the infiltration of concentrated vasopressin into the cervix, which acts as a potent vas vasoconstrictor when locally injected at the cervix, which is mainly composed of fibrous connective tissue. Without need for dilation, a 9mm suction caret was then inserted into the cervix under ultrasound guidance until the opening of the caret was at the level of the gestational sac. In general, a larger width caret will allow more content to pass through more easily and quickly and is less likely to perforate. This video shows the disappearance of the cervical ectopic on ultrasound as suction curettage is performed. Copious products of conception were aspirated. We then performed diagnostic hysteroscopy. The 10 mm resectoscope with a loop electrode was used, using lysine as the distension media. Here we can see the space in the upper cervical canal that was occupied by the gestational sac, and beyond this we can see a normal uterine cavity through hysteroscopic inspection. Hemostasis in this case was excellent, and postoperatively the patient had no more vaginal bleeding upon immediate discharge from the hospital. At our follow-up, she was doing well and voiced no ongoing issues. In our second case, we have an asymptomatic 30-year-old G4A2P1 presenting with ultrasound findings of a type 1 C-section scar pregnancy. Here we see the ultrasound images, which show a gestational sac that distends the space within the C-section scar defect with a preserved myometrial layer, with the gestational sac abutting the endometrial cavity. After being counseled on medical and surgical options, the patient opted for surgical management. Like the first case, the bladder was retrofilled and vasopressin injected into the cervix. Here we can clearly see the type 1 C-section scar ectopic pregnancy on real-time transabdominal ultrasound scanning. A 10 mm suction caret was used without need for dilation, and we can see the involution of the gestational sac as it is pulled into the suction tubing. Once adequate tissue is obtained, we proceeded with hysteroscopy using the 10 mm resectoscope and glycine and noted a normal endometrial cavity. One can note the large C-section niche which previously contained the gestational sac. Residual pieces of gestational tissue were resected without energy. We did not feel the need to proceed with laparoscopy as the products of conception were felt to have been adequately resected and bleeding was controlled. Once hysteroscopy was completed, some ongoing bleeding was noted coming from the uterus. An 18 French Foley catheter was then inserted into the C-section niche and inflated to 20 cc's. We used a metal Foley catheter guide to aid with placement. The bleeding immediately abated and the catheter was kept in situ for the next 24 hours. The patient received antibiotic prophylaxis with ANSEF. After the Foley balloon was deflated, the patient was discharged the following day. At our follow-up, she was doing well and had resumed regular menses. We have presented two cases where suction DNC has historically been associated with risk of hemorrhage. 
we present an approach to suction DNC that can be safe and effective in the treatment of various complex surgical conditions. Firstly, we highlight the utility of intraoperative real-time ultrasound in both of these cases. Being able to maintain visualization during the procedure decreases the risk of uterine perforation and allows for active monitoring of procedural efficacy. Retrofilling of the bladder is also a useful technique to improve visualization and correct sharp uterine antiversion. Secondly, the use of vasopressin to aid in minimization of blood loss is especially important in cases where hemostasis cannot be reliant on myomutual contraction. Other techniques for preemptive hemostasis, such as transvaginal ligation of the cervical vaginal vessels and uterine artery embolization, have also been described. One could also pr consider preoperative tranexamic acid administration. Thirdly, we recommend avoiding the use of sharp curettage if possible, as this may result in tissue trauma and excessive bleeding. Proceeding with diagnostic hysteroscopy following suction curettage allows for the visualization and targeted removal or retrieval of residual tissue or pathology. Fourthly, the use of intrauterine or intracervical Foley balloon is a low-cost, simple intervention that is an effective adjunct for obtaining hemostatic control. By attaching the catheter to a drainage bag, monitoring of ongoing bleeding is possible as well. A rigid metal catheter guide can be a useful tool for Foley placement. Prophylactic antibiotics can be considered as long as the Foley is in situ as well. In this video, we show that surgical management of complex ectopic pregnancies can be managed safely and effectively using simple surgical techniques such as a suction curettage which is both a minimally invasive and uterine sparing technique. We propose the aforementioned approach to minimize bleeding and other complications during and after the procedure.